a pandemic, and so everybody's not meeting in their churches. But you know what? The spirit of praise, the spirit of worship, the spirit of thanksgiving is still in the house. Amen. The spirit of glorifying God for what he did at Calvary through his loving son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We can still praise God in our homes, in the church. Amen. Wherever we are, because the church is in our heart. Amen. And so we came today to praise and lift up the name of Jesus. And we wanted to do this uh, service from the church. Amen. We don't have to, amen, be in any particular place. But you know what? I thank God for the church and the bride of Christ. I thank God for what he did through his loving son. Amen. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. So we're going to go forward this morning. And I'm just going to ask you before we get started, if you would, just bow your heads with us in a word of prayer. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Father, for being good all the time. We want to thank you for this Resurrection Sunday, dear God, for blessing us, oh God, to be able to live, oh God, and to celebrate on this day what Jesus did at Calvary, how he shed his innocent blood for those of, of us, oh God, Lord, that were yet sinners, oh God, and that includes all of us, all of the world, oh God, he being the only one that was without sin, Father, Lord, the perfect sacrifice, the perfect lamb that laid down his life for folks, oh God, that didn't even know him, didn't even love him, God. Father, we thank you for it right now. We thank you for what the blood represents, oh God, even this day. We thank you for the power and the anointing that destroyed the yoke, oh God. And we pray that you would bless us, oh God, in this service today, that as we go forward, oh God, that yokes will be destroyed, that burdens will be lifted, that souls will be saved, oh God, that men will turn to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing, dear God, destroy the yokes. In Jesus' precious name we pray, Father. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Don't you bless God. Amen. In your soul all the time. Amen. And when you start praising him, amen, it just gets you even more excited. Amen. At this time, we're going to move forward and we're going to call my daughter, amen, Sister Keisha Whittier. Amen. And she's going to come and sing a selection for us. Let's say praise the Lord for Sister Keisha Whittier. Let's give God a hand. Praise from your house. Hallelujah. <laughs> we're gonna, this is a glorious day. So we're going to sing this song. Emmanuel Temple, you know this is one of our songs that we love to sing. And so today is a glorious day. God came and he died for our sins and he rose again. And he died so that we can live again. Hallelujah. He is the resurrection. So he called your name and you can live again. Whatever situation you're in, know that God can bring you out of it. Know that he can be resurrected. Even if it looks dead, your situation is not dead because you have the resurrector inside of you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing this song together. Come on, clap your hands wherever you are. Come on. God, we bless you.
certainly bless God and thank God for Sister Keisha Whittier with that selection. Amen. Glorious day. Amen. That's one of my favorite songs I enjoy, praising and lifting up the name of Jesus. And I just believe the people of God should always be excited and always motivated and inspired about what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Because you know what? I wouldn't want to be a part of something that there is no joy in it and everybody's sad and, and there's nothing to look forward to. But amen, according to the word of God and just my experience in my Christian walk, Amen. God always blows my mind. Amen. He always shows us something, amen, that we didn't see at first. Amen. We may start out in darkness, but God gives us a, a certain light, amen, and a certain hope that comes with that light. So I'm grateful and thankful to God, amen, for just being God. And as we celebrate him on this Resurrection Sunday, amen, we want you at home, amen, wherever you are, whatever means, amen, you're uh, watching this uh, broadcast, we want you to be excited. Get a watch party going, amen. Invite your friends, amen, to help and celebrate, amen, on this Resurrection Sunday. Man, one of the first things I want to do today is commune, amen, commune, amen. It's a Resurrection Sunday, amen, and before Jesus, amen, went through that trial, amen, that he faced on the cross and arrest, the arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, 
Amen. We have what is called the Last Supper. Amen. Some some folks, amen, uh, call it communion. Amen. Uh, it's one of those things that the sacred part of the Christian faith. And we want to do that this morning. Amen. So I'm going to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through verse number 30 for your listening pleasure. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And the last verse, verse number 30 says, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Amen. Praise God. So we thank God for communion. We thank God, amen, for just the opportunity to come and to honor him through communion. And so I'm going to take the bread, the unleavened bread, and I'm going to eat it, amen. And I'm doing this in the spirit of the Emmanuelites that are not here and anybody else out there in social media land, amen, that's standing, amen, as a Christian and represent our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. The scripture lets us know it's for as often as we do this, we do in remembrance of Christ. Amen. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, amen, at the last supper, he took bread and he broke it and he gave to the disciples and they did eat. So we're eating to the glory of God. Amen. And then they took fruit of the vine. Amen. And they drank it. Amen. Doing this to the glory of God. Amen. Honoring him. Amen. In communion. We bless God for it. And we pray that as you have partook in this communion with us, amen, in spirit, that if you had sickness in your body, that God healed you, amen, that if you had a hurt or something in your body, that God touched you, amen, that whatever was going on in your life, that this spirit of communion has turned your day around, anything bad, that the communion has turned your day around, and you're going to have a glorious day, amen. So I want you to just stay tuned because God has a word for us on this day. At this time, we're going to call Sister Keisha Whittier back, amen, with one more selection, and then we're going to come forth with the word of God, amen. And again, get some, uh, some of your friends to join in and get a watch party going, amen. Let them know, amen. Emmanuel Temple is there right now. Sister Keisha Whittier.
nail pierced hands. Nail pierced hands with me. By his blood, we're washed clean. Now we have the victory. Sing the power of sin is broken.
ashes of defeat, the resurrected King is resurrected me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of Everything. We sing hallelujah. You have won it all for me. And death could not hold you down. You are the risen king. Seated in majesty. you, Lord, for being our resurrected King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Amen. Thank you, Sister Keisha Whittier. Amen. We want to thank God for our musicians as well. Amen. As we praise and lift up the wonderful name of Jesus on this Resurrection Sunday, we have the victory. Amen. We have the victory. What Jesus did at Calvary, how come it we bless your holy name, dear God. We thank you, Sandria. What you did at Calvary, dear Father, through your loving son, Jesus. Lord, we couldn't have paid that price, oh God. It was too great a price for us, Father. But we can bless you, oh God, for what you've done. We can glorify you this day. We can lift you up in praise and adoration on this day because we have the victory through the precious blood of your loving son, Jesus. Father, we thank you today. We bless the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On this Resurrection Sunday, amen. And we know God is just doing wonderful things, amen, in all of our lives, amen. We have a reason to praise our great big God. We have a reason to lift him up. We have a reason to magnify him. We have a reason to glorify him. Amen. The word of God says in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Amen. In him we live, we move, and we have our being. Everything that we do, amen, in this life, anything that can resemble good is because of the good that Jesus gave us through the precious blood, his precious blood, that was shed at Calvary's cross. Amen. And we just celebrate him this day. And you know, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Amen. Because, amen, this room is filled with the presence of the Lord. This room is filled with the glory of God. Amen. And, and the word of God tells me that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. So there is freedom right now. Amen. You may be sitting at home. And you may even be incarcerated and watching this broadcast wherever you are. Amen. You know what? You're still free in God. You may have been diagnosed with a certain ailment in your body. Amen. But you're still free in God. Amen. Because of what Jesus did at Calvary. And I just want to let you know, amen, the blood of Jesus washes away anything that our lives could be stained with. Know that the blood of Jesus works. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I'm going to come to you with a word, amen, I believe God has given us for today. And amen, it coincides with the song Sister Keisha was just singing. Amen. God has given us the victory. Hallelujah. We won the victory. Amen. And we're going to talk about the victory of faith on this Resurrection Sunday. The victory of faith. And I just want to use as a base scripture from 1 John. Amen. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 5, I'm sorry, in verse number 4. 1 John chapter 5, verse number 4. It reads, for whatsoever, whatsoever is born of God, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I'm going to read that again. That's 1 John chapter 5, verse number 4. For whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith even our faith. Hallelujah. Just bow your heads for a word of prayer. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you'll bless us, O oh God, as we partake of, of your word, that we, we will eat the whole roll, and that we will allow it to run its course in our spiritual man, O oh God, that our natural man, O oh God, may coincide with your will and your purpose for our lives. Lord, that you will be blessed, O oh God, through every step we take in this life. Lord, and we just believe in it as the word go forth. That if there's anybody sick out there, oh God, that you would heal them. If there's any depression, oh God, that you would deliver and make free on this Resurrection Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And just to stay in the spirit, amen, of Emmanuel. Amen. After I read the verse, we usually read the mantra, amen, that's above my head, amen, on the wall here. And it reads, amen, as we hold the scripture up, I'm excited and enthusiastic about the living word of God. I will read it. I will study it, I will live it, and with God's help, I will share it. Amen. We thank God for that. Amen. So we're going to talk about the victory of faith, the victory of faith. And as we get started, I want to remind you again to invite your friends, amen, by way of social media to join us, amen, in this particular service today and this that we're partaking of, the bread of life. Amen. Because everybody needs to know who Jesus is. Amen. And we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's the power of God into salvation. And everybody that you know need to be saved. If you're not saved, you need to be saved. Amen. And God can save you today right where you are. Amen. He can reach you right where you are. Amen. You're not too far from God where God can't touch you, where he can't reach you. Amen. Nobody is out of God's reach. Amen. And that's what this word is today, where he says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. But you know what? We couldn't have this faith if it wasn't for what God did through his loving son, Jesus, at Calvary. We wouldn't have the faith, amen, to rejoice. We wouldn't have the faith to stand here, amen, in a sanctuary where there are about 10 or so folks, amen, uh, worshiping God, amen, because we understand that the word of God tells us where two or three folks are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst, amen. So it really doesn't take a whole lot of people, just the right people, people with the mind to worship God, people with the mind to praise God, people that understand, amen, that it's not about us. It's not about who we are. It's about who he is. It's about knowing Jesus. It's about worshiping him as our Lord and Savior. It's about glorifying God all the time, every day of our life, every heartbeat of our life, honoring him and glorifying him because he's the one to be praised. He is the one to be magnified. He is the one to be lifted up. Amen. So our, our, our victory, the faith of our victory is in the fact that our trust is in the Lord and that our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love definitions, you all, and I define victory as an achievement of ma or mastery or success in a struggle or an endeavor against odds or difficulties. You know, so our victories are not uh, that celebratory if there was no struggle against it. If things come easy to us, then we have a sense of, well, it wasn't a struggle, so it wasn't a fight. And so I don't really uh, classify it as a victory. But you know what? We have the victory because of what Jesus went through. And it's real easy for us. All we have to do is accept it. But, amen, Jesus accomplished a lot 
Amen. In that anybody that gives his or her life to the Lord Jesus Christ or surrenders his or her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You become a born again believer and you can have joy in this life. And then you have an expectation and a joy in the life to come. Amen. I, I heard one preacher say it like this. Amen. The moment that God saves us. Amen. And if you die. Amen. You may stop living on this side of life. Amen. But you keep on breathing on the next side of life, which is in heaven. Amen. So we, we never die. Amen. The word of God tells us in the book of St. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And we live because Jesus lives. We got joy because the joy that God gave us is a joy. Amen. That nothing in this life can comp compare to or, or nothing in this life is greater than the joy of being a saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled individual. And you know what? We've been out of the gathering of the church building for about a month or so now. But you know what? We still got a joy because it's an inner thing. It's, it's something that's on the inside of us. And we still walk in victory. We still walk in victory because of our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said that if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to me. Amen. Jesus knew that they would crucify him. He knew that they would raise that cross up into the sky. Amen. And that was a really big mistake that the enemy made because they thought they had done away with Jesus. They thought after they had beat him, amen, with the cat of nine tails, which was a horrific uh, beating, amen, in that that cat of nine tails was a, a whip designed with uh, uh, about nine leather straps. And throughout that strap, there were bones, amen, placed with, within it. And as it would hit the back of Jesus, it would grab the flesh of Jesus. And when the uh, executor would pull it back, he would pull flesh from Jesus' body. Amen. And you know what? Amen. That whipping should have been a whipping that you and I should have been taken. That whipping that Jesus took should have been us. Amen. But Jesus stepped in front of, amen, us. And he said, he'll take it. Amen. He died so we can live. Amen. So victorious faith does not deny that there are difficulties we must encounter. This kind of faith emits a type of confidence and victory through the power of God's word in spite of the difficulties facing us. With this in mind, we cannot allow the doubts of others to cloud our perspective as revealed to us by faith. And what I'm saying there is sometimes we are around people that don't exercise the type of faith that you exercise. And you will think that you're strange or that you're weird because you see, see, see something in God that other folks don't see. You have a relationship with God that tells you that even though things look bad to the natural eye, in the spiritual realm, we already won. Amen. And that's what Paul meant in Philippians 121 when he said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is a gain. So he was saying, I win either way. I win if I'm living in this natural side of life and I win on the spiritual side of life. I win here on earth and I win in heaven as well. Amen. So we don't lose. Amen. Because what Jesus did at Calvary, amen, he gave us the victory. First Corinthians chapter 15, amen, tells us that Jesus took the sting out of death and robbed the grave of its victory. When Jesus died on the cross and they buried him in that tomb, amen, and after three days Jesus got up, amen, Jesus got up with all power in his hand, amen. Jesus doesn't have to die again. He cannot die again, amen. It was that body that died, amen, but the blood of Jesus, amen, is still healing. The blood of Jesus is still living within folks today. Amen. So we don't have to feel as though we're lost or we're hopeless because God has given us the power. Amen. Through the precious blood of Jesus. Somebody wrote a song. They said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What makes me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. We can get raises on our jobs. We can have wonderful things happen to us, amen, things that we celebrate in life that make us happy. But you know nothing compares to your salvation. Nothing compares to your walk with the Lord. Nothing compares to Jesus cleaning you, amen, taking your black soul, amen, and purging it and making it white as snow, amen, making your heart pure, amen. The Bible tells us in St. Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse number 8, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God, amen. So we see God through the precious blood of Jesus. We see the blood of Jesus washing away sins. We see the blood of Jesus purifying our lives. We see the blood of Jesus making us whole, amen. Those of us that were lost, and I'm going to tell you, whatever lifestyle you live, God saved you from something, Whatever you were going through in life, amen, God saved you from that prison that you were in. 
Amen. He saved you. He saved you from it. Amen. The O'Neill twins wrote a song. Amen. He dropped the charges. Amen. And that's what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. When they should have been calling you and they should have been uh, uh, purging us. They should have been beating us. They should have been nailing nails in our hands. Amen. Jesus took, amen, our charge. And then he dropped them against us and said, put it on me because he was the only one that could bear the sins of the world. Amen. So we have this victory, this victory, this faith that comes in victory, amen, is won through what Jesus did at Calvary. Our victory that overcomes the world is hinged in our unwavering faith in the ever so truth provided by God, our Heavenly Father. There are many unwavering faiths, amen, in the ever so truth provided by God. We see in scriptures such as Joshua, Caleb, Gideon, Elijah, and most importantly, as I said earlier, what Jesus did at Calvary. It has proven to us that our victories are not based on large numbers supporting the cause. You know, sometimes as a Christian, you may feel like you out there by yourself. You may feel like there's nobody else around, nobody else saved. Amen. But I want to let you know that God has the ability, amen, to save anybody anywhere from anything. Amen. No matter how dark things may be. Amen. My, my mind reflects back in scripture to Elijah thinking that he was the only one that was serving God. But God said, look, I got 7,000 that have not bowed a knee to Baal. Amen. So sometimes we're going to feel like we're out there by ourselves. Amen. But we win. We win. You can look at your neighbor or the person you're sharing your watch party with. Amen. And tell them we win. Amen. Regardless of what you're going through right now. Amen. Jesus knew that you're going, you're going to be facing what you're facing right now. He knew that you would be dealing with what you're dealing with right now. He knew the diagnosis that the, your doctor would give you that wasn't good news to you. Amen. Jesus already paid the price for it. Amen. He already, amen, is the cure for the coronavirus. Amen. COVID-19 is not something that caught God by surprise. I, I want you to understand, amen, that God has already given us the cure, amen. And one of my favorite scriptures I quote it every time I'm standing in front of you, amen, and that's 2 Chronicles 7, 14. God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And you know, we need a healing in this land right now, amen. Folks are afraid. People are afraid. People are hungry. People are, are, are not knowing what's going to come next. You know, when you were working a job, you knew you had a check coming, amen, but everything is closed down, and folks are not working, so people are afraid. And you know what? I'm, I'm concerned, but I'm not living my life, amen, full of fear, amen. I, I wrote something down here, amen, to just share with you guys. You can't be full with fear and full with faith at the same time, amen. So I'm not going to tell you that I'm not concerned because I am concerned, but I can tell you that I'm not fearful. And again, you cannot be filled with fear and filled with faith at the same time. Amen. Something has to give room to the other. Amen. I choose to walk by faith and not by sight. I choose to believe that God can do anything but fail. I choose to believe that God gave COVID-19 a certain time that it's going to be in this world. Amen. And it has an expiration date. Amen. And I believe as long as the churches are praying and fasting and seeking the face of God and doing what we're supposed to do, amen, I believe, amen, that God will move on our behalf. I believe that God will do what the saints are asking him to do. The word of God lets us know that God is not going to allow anything to come to pass before he reveals it to his prophet first. And so there were many prophets. If you get out there on YouTube and you search, you'll see that there were many prophecies that went forth telling us about this COVID-19 that was coming up, a disease that would plague the world. Amen. And you know what this disease has done? It's put all of us on the same page. We're praying for the same thing. We're praying for God to heal this land. We're praying for God to save folks. We're praying that folks that backslid would turn back to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're praying that people that uh, begin to uh, preach a, a strange doctrine will go back to the roots of their faith. The faith that they learned when, when Big Mama was taking them to church and they were coming up as little children and, and Granddaddy was taking them to church. That kind of faith that we learn about the Word of God. See, because people have gotten outside of the Bible and they've constructed within their minds and within their hearts what pleases them. It's, it's called a spirit of pragmatism. If it feels right, then it must be right. But I want to let you know that our salvation is not based on feelings. Amen. It's based on the gospel. It's based on what Jesus did at Calvary. And you know what? That word gospel means good news. So that means it's good news. Amen. It was bad news 
of what they did to an innocent man, but it's good news that there was somebody to stand in the gap for us. And his name is Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Amen. The one that we need to turn to all the time, not just when we're faced with things like what we're faced with now in this world, coronavirus, not when we're just faced with, I'm wondering where my next meal is going to come from or my, how I'm going to pay my mortgage payment. Amen. Even in the church world, how we're going to make the mortgage payments on the churches. Amen. We got to trust God. Amen. And God has brought us back to our knees. Amen. Yes, it's, it's Resurrection Sunday, but God is still doing wonderful things. Amen. He's still doing wonderful things. People are yet praising him. Wise men still seek him. And if I were you, amen, I would turn to him right now, right now. The word of God tells us in Corinthians, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. Just a little further, I just want to name a few things that faith, the, the victory of faith is. The victory of faith reveals exactly what God has promised. The victory of faith is evidence that God's promises are real. The victory of faith inspires us to readily move now. The victory of faith brings us along an abiding confidence. So there's a confidence, amen, in our walk with God. There's a confidence that our faith has, amen, in what Jesus did at Calvary, in what Jesus is doing in our lives right now. See, because we're not, we're not ministering a past uh, doctrine that has expired and, and that's not alive today, but the same word that was ministered, amen, many, many years ago is still being ministered today. You know why? Because it's alive and it never dies. And that's the thing we have to understand about God's word. We used to have a saying that uh, a person is only as good as their word. Well, you know, God is as good as his word. And his word is so good that his word became flesh and dwelt among men. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Amen. So he is as good as his word. He is as good as his word. And we have to stand on that, you all, no matter how dark the times may seem or how dark things may be in your life. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the victory of your faith in the word of God. The victory of, the, of faith follows God in everything. The victory of faith rests solely in being with the Lord. Amen. So we have an expectation. Amen. When unsaved folks die, amen, they call for the undertakers. But when saved folks die, I call it, they can't call for the upper takers. Amen. We going up. Come on. We got something to look forward to. Amen. So we don't live this life as though we have nothing to look forward to. We don't live this life like everybody else. And I know it may sound strange, y'all, but you got to understand, God said, make me a difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean, righteousness and unrighteousness. We got to see things through the eyes of God. We got to see things the way God is looking at it. Amen. We look at Pete when a person died. We look at it. This person died and passed away. Amen. When God look at it, he's calling us home. Amen. So look. Amen. Look at things through the eyes of God. Let faith show you what God wants you to see. Look at things through God's eyes. Amen. And your perspective on life will be more of a po positive perspective as opposed to looking at everything in a negative way. Amen. Victory of faith even overrides death and the grave. Remember, in 1 Corinthians, Jesus took the sting out of death and robbed the grave of his victory. Amen. So death has no power over us. Amen. We may die a physical death. Amen. But Jesus told us, amen, in John eleven twenty five. amen, though we were dead, yet shall we live. So we may stop breathing on this side of life in, or on the earth, but we start breathing our heavenly life the moment we die as men and women of God. Amen. As born again Christians. So the victory of faith also banishes fear because the two clash. Faith and, and fear clashes. Amen. So faith is more powerful than fear if you let it operate in your life. And so fear has to flee from your life because faith is greater and stronger than fear. And then the victory of, the victory of faith is the result of the preached word of God. Look, we haven't been in the church services, but you need to hear the preach word of God. The Bible tells us how can we hear without the preacher and how can he preach except he's sent by God. And you may say, hey, I read my Bible. I listen to this. I listen to the other. Amen. And, and I got a word from the Lord. Amen. But God has men and women that he's anointed to preach his word. Amen. And there's a certain uh, uniqueness that God put on his preachers that when they preach the word, amen, as a result of them preaching the word and you hearing what the word is being, that word being preached, amen, God began to reveal and give you insight into what his word means. So we need to preach it. We need to hear the preach word. That's why we get we got to get back to our churches, you all. 
Amen. We're doing good now. Amen. We got to keep praying. But I, I'm trusting and believing God. Amen. That the moment this coronavirus thing dies out. Amen. That folk will come back to church. Amen. And come back with a drive and enthusiasm and a motivation to serve God. Amen. Not, not like we did at 9-11. Amen. When some folk, folks were saying, God bless America. Amen. And, and the church was full uh, the Sunday after 9-1-1. Amen. And then as things got uh, closer, further and further away from 9-11, amen, and then folks start drifting away from the church, amen, and we were asking the questions, God bless America, and telling God bless America, amen, but then the saints start saying, when is America going to bless God, amen, and I'm saying not only will America, when will America start blessing God, but when will the world start blessing God, and we got to get back to the roots of righteousness, we got to get back to what pleases God and not what pleases us, you know, we we have this thing that we've uh, said that a person got the right to this and they got the right to that. And we we voted ourselves right out of the will of God. And because man may vote something as a law doesn't necessarily mean it's right with God. So we want to be right with God. We want to be right with what pleases God. We want to be right with what honors God and what glorifies God. Amen. So don't. Forget about the fact that God is the one to be glorified. And whatever happens in our life, it has to be done to the glory of God. And then the last thing I want to give you is the victory of faith is a continuous building of your relationship with God. So it's a constant relationship builder. Your relationship with God is being built, amen, as you walk by faith and not by sight. And then in my summary statement, I just want to say, as it pertains to victory of faith, when surrendering ourselves totally to God, it is going to result in God purging us of anything that opposes pure, unadulterated belief and trust in his word. Your eyes and your heart must be directed toward Jesus. There is a saying, if you're going to lead the orchestra, you must turn your back on the crowd. If you're going to lead the orchestra, you got to turn your back on the crowd. If you're going to serve Jesus, you got to turn away from that stuff that separates you from Jesus. If you're going to serve Jesus, that means you're going to have to give up some stuff that you know displeases the Lord. Amen. And sometimes that can cut real close to home. Amen. Uh, I remember where the, in the scriptures where the disciples, a couple of disciples, James and John, asked Jesus, uh, can they sit on either side of him when he come into his kingdom? And then he asked them a question. Amen. They, and they actually put their mom up to asking Jesus that question. But he asked them the question, are you able to drink from the cup that he must drink from? And I'm going to tell you, amen, Jesus drank from a bitter cup that you and I may live. And whatever God has placed in your life, whatever you have to give up for you to walk that walk with God that please God, amen, are you willing to drink from that cup? It's going to cost you something. It may cost you friendship. It may cost you some of the folks that you thought were the closest to you will probably turn away from you. But you got to love Jesus more than you love that stuff. Amen. St. Luke chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus said, if you love, amen, your father, mother, sister, brothers more than me, you're not worthy of me. So you got to love God more than you love anybody and anything else. And I want to ask if we got anybody out there that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the parting of your sins, I want you right now, amen, as you're watching this broadcast, amen, I want you to just bow your heads right now, and I want you to pray that prayer of repentance. If you really want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you really want to be a born-again believer, amen, I want you to just trust God with me as we pray this prayer. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, whoever that person is, Father, that is ready right now, oh God, to lay it all down at the altar and to surrender their life to you, Father. Lord, that they will receive and accept you as their Lord and Savior, as the Lord of their life, dear Father. That you will give them a mind, oh God, to turn away from sinful things, oh God, and to surrender wholeheartedly to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, save them right now, Lord. Don't let them, oh God, have a temporary salvation and turn around in the next few moments or hours and go back to what they have give, say they have given up. But let them have a true repentance, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will give them new life, new hope, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, that they will serve you for the rest of their days as their Lord and as their Savior. Lord, we believe it to be done even now, Father. Lord, that they will live that life, oh God, to your glory, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Hallelujah. We bless God today. Amen. For this word. Amen. For those of you maybe just tuning in. Amen. We were, amen, talking about the victory of faith. And our base scripture was 1 John chapter 5, verse number 4. Amen. And I just want to encourage you to keep walking by faith and not by sight. I want to encourage you to keep God as the center of your joy. 
I want you to stay inspired and motivated, amen, and on fire for Jesus. And don't let anything separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, in the book of Psalms 37 and 23, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Amen. And sometimes we get a little nervous and fearful. But 25 answered this question. David says, I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor is he begging bread. Amen. God is going to take care of us. We're his children. He's going to take care of you. So fear not. Trust God. Believe him with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. Amen. I just want to give you some instructions, amen, before I go. Amen. And I hope you have received this word and got something that has blessed your soul today. Amen. If you would like to give to Emmanuel Temple Church of God, located at 4935 Union Boulevard, here in the city of St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Amen. There are a number of ways you can give. Amen. You can give by Givelify. That's an app you can download on your phone. Amen. And you type in Emmanuel Temple Church of God. And we're the one that's at 4935 Union Boulevard. You'll see a picture of myself. Bishop Ronnie Whittier, a picture of the church building, and you know you're at the right Emmanuel Temple. You can also give by going to our website, EmmanuelTempleChurchOfGod.org. You can give through PayPal if you go through our website. Amen. You can also go to uh, uh, our cash app, Amen. Emmanuel Temple STL, Emmanuel Temple STL, and you can give that way. And for those of you that would like to mail in any donations, you can mail into Emmanuel Temple Church of God, Post Office Box 5057, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Again, that's Post Office Box 5057, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Amen. We want to hear from you. Amen. You may just want to call or write. Amen. And just let us know, amen, that you enjoyed the broadcast and, and that you want to know a little bit more about Emmanuel Temple. I believe God is going to bless us in the days to come where we'll be coming back into our buildings, pastors, and we'll be able to worship God, amen, in person with uh, parishioners, amen. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, before I go, amen, you can join us, Emmanuel Temple Church of God, for our hour power prayer line, amen. That's a one-hour prayer uh, call that we have, and you just dial 1-720-650-3030, and you can put in the code 502 3968 Again, just dial 1-720-650-3030, and the code is 502-3968. And that'll be on Wednesdays at noon from 12 to 1, and then on Thursdays, Thursday evenings from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., and then Saturday mornings from 11 a.m. to 12 noon, 11 a.m. to 12 noon. Again, this is our Our Power Prayer Line. Amen. And we just want you to join in and, and pray with us. Amen. The Bible tells us we should always pray and not faint and to pray without ceasing. Amen. Praise God. Again, we thank God. Amen. For today, thank God for this Resurrection Sunday. And it is my prayer that you have a most wonderful and joyful rest of this day. Uh, we will be here this Wednesday. Amen. We will be, uh, should I say, on uh, this same uh, uh, ministry. We'll be ministering on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, for our Bible class hour. It's titled Growing Towards Spiritual Maturity. Amen. And we have a one, wonderful subject matter that we'll be dealing with. Again, that's this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Emmanuel Temple Church of God. Amen. Again, stay prayerful and remember, amen, that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above whatever we may ask or think. Remember that we walk by faith and not by sight. Remember the victory of faith, this message. Amen. And our mission, amen, is preach the word of God to unleash into the world the power of God's word one verse at a time. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. May be with you.